video is about learning targets 21 and 22 for AP Physics B. 21 is about dealing with uh, strings and pulleys in these Newton's third law equations or calculations. Uh, and 22 is the same types of problems, just specified that uh, you end up having to solve a system of equations in order to, uh, to get a final answer on this one. Uh, so the the big thing that we need, need to know in these problems is that in any situation where we have uh, a string or a, a rope, we would say that the tension in that rope is consistent throughout. So let's say we have a mass that's uh, got a rope coming off of it, and that rope is attached to a pulley here. We've got some kind of a surface here. We'll just call that mass 1 and mass 2. Uh, so we know that uh, if this mass 2 is hanging off of the edge of this table, this counter, whatever it is, that uh, you know, it's got gravity pulling it downward, it's also going to have this rope upward that slows it down. Uh, this uh, mass here is going to have probably some friction with that surface that's going to want to try and keep it from moving, uh, and it's got the tension in this rope pointing to the right that's going to cause it to move. Uh, now, in any situation like this, the tension that mass 1 feels from this rope would be equal to the tension that mass 2 feels from this rope. Now, the direction is going to be different because of that pulley uh, there and uh, because of Newton's third law, uh, but those two forces would be equal to each other. So the force from mass 2 acting on mass 1 is going to point to the right. The force from mass 1 uh, acting on mass 2 is going to point upward. Now this is sort of an indirect Newton's third law pair. Really it's the force from the string acting on mass 2 and the force from the string acting on mass 1 here. Uh, but the string just kind of acts to transfer forces between mass 1 and mass 2. So let's, uh, let's plug in some numbers and we'll do, uh, do a little solving here. Let's say we have a mass 1 of 15 kilograms, a mass 2 of 10 kilograms, and then mass, two, mass 1 is going to be up on this, this countertop. We'll say that there's some friction there, and we'll call that coefficient of friction equal to 0 0.20. And let's find the acceleration for mass 2. So how fast is this mass going to accelerate downward? We know if we cut this string, just let it fall, it would fall accelerating at 9.8 meters per second squared. So we can assume that this number is going to be somewhere between 0 and negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So that would be a good way to check our work when we get to the very end. Now with two objects in this problem, we're going to start by drawing free body diagrams, and we're going to have two of them, one for each object. So let's begin there. So mass 1, we've got uh, first off the rope, the tension from the rope, pulls it to the right. We've got some friction that resists that motion. Uh, there's gravity pulling it downwards, so it's got a weight force. And then there's a normal force upward that prevents it from falling through the table. For mass 2, little simpler picture here. We don't have any interaction with the table, so it's just gravity pulling it downward, weight downward, and tension upward. Now we, uh, we go into this thinking that, okay, this mass is probably going to be accelerating downward. It doesn't necessarily have to be, but uh, you know, most of these situations that makes sense. Uh, so if that's the case, then our weight force would have to be larger than our tension force. Or you know, maybe there's enough friction here that this doesn't accelerate. If we give it a push downward, and, uh, and maybe it would um, travel at a constant rate, or maybe it would even slow down after we gave it a push. So the tension actually could be larger than the weight. Um, generally, you know, we'll look at situations where the weight is the larger one, but it doesn't have to be that way. Anytime we do the free body diagrams like this, our, our next step is generally to write out the Newton's second law equations that go along with those. 
So for mass 1, we have forces in the x direction and forces in the y direction. So we'll have to do each of those directions separately. So mass 1 has tension going to the right and friction going to the left. And that's going to be equal to mass 1 times acceleration for 1 in the x direction. And I'm going to leave a little bit of space before doing the y direction so I can do some more work there. So net force in the y direction is equal to mass times acceleration in the y. In the y direction, we've got the normal force upward and the weight force downward. And that's going to be equal to mass 1 times acceleration for 1 in the y direction. Now, actually, I can do a little bit more with this one before we move on to mass 2. Uh, assuming that uh, on this problem, it, it looks like this mass is just going to slide right across that table, um, not going upward or downward, not accelerating upward or downward. Uh, and if that's the case, then acceleration in the y would just be 0. So this term goes to 0, which means that our normal force has to equal the weight. We could take this a little bit further. We know that how to calculate weight. That's mass times acceleration of gravity. So normal force is equal to weight, which is equal to mass times gravity. Mass 1 times gravity. Mass 1 was 15 kilograms. Acceleration of gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. So the magnitude of the normal force is equal to the magnitude of the weight. And those both have a value of 147 newtons. All right, so now we can, uh, uh, we'll come back to the mass 1 in just a minute here. Um, let's go on to mass 2. This one we only have y direction, we don't have to worry about the x. So for this one, we've got a tension force upward minus the weight force downward. And that'll be equal to mass 2 times the acceleration 2. All right. Now, in this equation, I can calculate the weight. I, can, I have mass 2, but I've got tension that's unknown and the acceleration uh, that's unknown. That's in the y direction here. It's only acceleration in the y direction, so you really don't need that label, but would be consistent that way. Uh, over here, I've got the tension. The frictional force, I don't know right now, but I can calculate it. It's the coefficient of friction times the normal force, and I know both of those values. The mass of that, I know, and acceleration, I don't know. So I've got two equations, uh, these two equations, that have three unknowns between them. I've got the tension, and that appears in both of these, those would be equal. I've got the uh, acceleration for object 1 and the acceleration for object 2. Now we can simplify this a little bit by thinking about the situation. As m1 accelerates this direction, m2 is going to accelerate downward at the same rate. They're connected by this string, so they'll keep a constant distance between them. They'll accelerate together. So if I think about uh, how these are set up, if I assume that mass 1 is going to accelerate to the right, that'd be a positive acceleration. Mass 2 is going to accelerate downward, and downward in the y direction, that'd be a negative acceleration. So whatever I get for acceleration here would just be uh, in the negative of acceleration here. Now since I'm looking for this one, I might as well replace a1x with negative a2y, and I'll just drop the subscript with this. So tension minus, and the force of friction we can plug in there is going to be equal to the, uh, uh, the normal force times mu. It's equal to m1 times negative a2y. Okay, so those two move together. Now let's, let's get as many numbers in here and, and simplify things a bit. Uh, we've got still tension as an unknown in both of these equations. 
and a2y is an unknown in both of these equations. So this is shaping up to be a system of equations uh, problem where we have to use two, both equations to solve for our final answer. So let's simplify it as much as we can before we try to combine these. So here we'll have tension minus our normal force which we calculated down here to be 147 newtons times the coefficient of friction, which was 0 0.20, is equal to mass 1, that's 15 kilograms, times negative acceleration 2. And then over on uh, uh, the next line here would be uh, tension minus the, oops, forgot to calculate that value, 147 times 0.2, so that must be 7 times 0.2, 29, oh, yeah, 29.4 newtons is equal to negative 15 kilograms times A2. And we'll do the same thing over here. Tension minus the weight, which is just going to be mass times gravity again. So mass 2 times gravity is equal to mass 2 times acceleration 2. Tension minus is 10 kilograms, 9.8 meters per second squared, is equal to 10 kilograms times A2. And we'll simplify this. Tension is equal uh, tension minus 98 newtons is equal to 10 kilograms times a2. All right, so now we've got these two equations that both have uh, the same two unknowns in them. So I can solve this as a system, and uh, I'm going to bring that down to give myself a little bit more room. This one I'll solve by subtracting the two equations from each other, but substitution would work for this, graphing these would work. Um, any method for solving linear equations, a system of linear equations would be fine. Uh, so T minus 29.4 newtons, negative 15 kilograms times A2 was the first one, and T minus 98 newtons is equal to 10 kilograms times A2, and I'm going to subtract these, so then I get 0, T minus T, the 29.4 minus a negative 98 becomes plus 68.6 newtons, and then the negative 15 minus 10 kilograms is negative 25 kilograms times A2. And then last step, we're going to divide both sides by the negative 25 uh, and get our acceleration in the y is negative 2.7 meters per second squared, and that's for A2. And then since they're connected, that's also for A1, just in the, uh, the opposite direction. So uh, you know, we said that M1 was going to be accelerating to the right, while M2 accelerates downward. Uh, so here that M2 is going to be uh, you know, accelerating in the negative direction, M1 would be accelerating in the positive direction.